Now in our final session together, you are going to be exploring primarily the assessment task, your final assessment task for the course, um, which comes down to essentially two lesson plans within particular contexts. Now before that though, for those that have been out onto the practicum experience, we'll discuss your experiences in relation to digital technologies, what you have seen in terms of the teaching of digital technologies in schools, and what you've learned about that from your practicum experience. Then we'll examine your assessment task in detail. So as you come along with a well-developed um, preliminary draft of your final um, assessment submission. And we'll discuss that and unpack that and how you can improve upon it before you make your final submission. So there are some essential aspects of this task. The first is you're going to describe the context of your lessons. Now, this is essentially describing the school, the resources the school has, the types of students, and the specific class of students that you are teaching. You can't just teach a lesson without knowing who you're teaching it to, at least not in K-12 education. You need to frame your lesson such that it meets the needs of your students. Now, in order to meet those needs, you need to provide a contextual understanding of those students and their needs. Then you're going to frame your lessons within the context of a unit. So a unit generally goes for 10 weeks. You can choose how long your unit is you want to describe, but normally it's a 10 week unit and it sets out an arc of learning that students will be engaged with over those 10 weeks. Now your lessons will just be two lessons within that 10 week unit. Now they don't necessarily have to be adjacent. They don't have to be one after the other directly but they both need to contribute towards that unit. And there needs to be some connection between them. And that's what a unit plan essentially does. And that will set out what it is your students are going to be learning. Now, next you need to contextualize this within a more specific measure of their learning. And we do this through assessment instruments, assessment tasks. So you need to describe an assessment of your students that will measure their learning. So part of that is you need to describe exactly what it is they're going to be learning in terms of the accessible elements, the learning outcomes described from the curriculum. There should be a clear linkage between then what you say students are going to be learning and that you're going to be assessing them on and how your lessons prepare them to achieve that. If your lessons don't support their measure of their learning, then they're not really being effective lessons. You might be teaching them something, but it's then not what you're going to be assessing them on. So there's some sort of mismatch there. A good um, lesson program and good lesson plans should be clear in how the lesson being taught contributes towards students learning that is going to be measured in their assessment. Now, then it comes down to your two lesson plans. And these demonstrate that you know how to frame a sequence of activities that are engaging to your students, that clearly achieve some curriculum goals in terms of covering some content and that help students learn. Now, this will be directly measured in terms of the accessible um, elements that are addressed by your assessment items, but there are other things that you want your students to learn as well. And we've been exploring these in terms of the general capabilities, the thinking skills and the cross curriculum um, outcomes. So not just the things that 
are going to be assessed, not just the content descriptors from the curriculum document, but also general capabilities, thinking skills, and cross-curriculum priorities. That's what you want to try to demonstrate through your lesson plan. But it's not just what they learn, it's how they learn. How have you structured your lesson, or your lessons, your two lessons, so that they engage students pedagogically with the learning process, so that the learning is effective? And you need to define the approach you've taken to teaching. In this course, we've covered two main approaches, project-based learning and um, activity-based learning, direct instruction and inquiry-based learning from another perspective. So your lessons need to show that you have taken an approach to learning and you've utilized that and that it is likely that students are going to learn as a result of your lessons. And then finally, there'll be a range of resources that you're going to be utilizing to support your lessons. Different activities, different um, pieces of kit, software programs, programming languages, whatever. So you need to articulate how you've utilized those resources effectively to support students' learning. You can also articulate how it's supporting their assessment, but fundamentally, most importantly, how they support students' learning. So all of this within two lesson plans. A lot can be contained within the descriptions of a lesson plan. And that's essentially what they're for. So in the tutorial, we're going to go through your initial um, explorations of your lesson plans and how you frame those. Come with lots of specific questions on how to improve your assessment um, contribution. I can't just look at your work and give you advice on how to improve it. That would be providing you with a draft response and assessing your work um, preliminarily to assessing it um, for real. But I can answer your direct questions. So if you've got something you want advice on, if you've got something specific that you can ask a question about, come with those prepared. And we'll also hear from your peers and how they're approaching things in different ways. And that may also give you ideas and prompts. We're also going to look at how to use generative text tools to assist you. Now, no generative text tool is going to create a really great lesson plan on its own. Certainly they can, they can definitely produce lesson plans, but the expectation of you is that your lesson plan is going to address some very specific criteria and address the various elements that we've been talking about in an exceptional way. Now, generative text tools are fantastic for brainstorming and getting ideas and contributing to that and structuring your lesson plans and all, the, all that nature. So I encourage you to utilize them but utilize them to take you beyond what you could do on your own. And go beyond what ChatGTP and generative text tools can do on their own by making your own contribution to that process. And we'll discuss some of these ways you can do that in the tutorial. But I've also provided you with two readings. The first goes through a range of different aspects around teacher education and the use of generative text tools to improve the performance of, of beginning teachers such as yourselves in creating effective lesson plans. The second looks more at where teachers are going to be utilizing generative text tools and other AI tools as they develop in your development as a teacher to improve the way you teach. So we're going to discuss how these tools are transforming the way teaching is occurring and will occur, but also how you can utilize these tools in your own practice in preparing for your lessons. So again, 
Try those out, explore what can be done, and come along with ideas that you can discuss during the tutorial. And then finally, for those of you that are continuing on with your specialization in technologies education, and in particular computer education, and will be um, studying digital solutions in semester two, trimester two, trimester two, um, I've provided you with some resources to work on during the break so that you are better prepared to engage with learning how to teach senior students digital solutions. In particular, many of you may be rusty in your teaching of basic programming concepts, and in particular around the use of the structured query language, SQL or SQL, depending upon how you pronounce it. So I encourage you to brush up on a programming language. Now, it doesn't matter which programming language. Ideally, it should be what we call a teaching programming language, which generally is a programming language that has relatively simple syntax and um, is useful for teaching. It's, uh, Python is currently one of the flavors of the month in this respect, but it will need to be a textual programming language. Um, while we can still use um, icon-based and block-based programming languages in the teaching of digital solutions, we need to also go beyond that and teach a text-based programming language, such as Java, um, Java or JavaScript, um, C Sharp, uh, Python, very common one. So there are a range of different programming languages that you can engage with. But it's more the fundamental concepts that you need to be familiar with. Sequence, selection, iteration, modularity are the core. And how they're utilized in any programming language is what the um, any course of study in programming is about. But also around the structured query language, how to create queries, how to um, create databases through the use of query languages, how to retrieve information from those databases. These are also fundamental aspects of the digital solutions course. So in preparation for that, uh, brush up on your programming and SQL skills, and we'll then just um, explore that in semester two. But back to digital technologies, you should come along to the tutorial prepared with your draft of your final um, assessment task, your two lesson plans and the associated contextual elements, and we'll explore those during the tutorial.